Alright, this is Daryl. So me and Corey will cover this session, multifabric, VXLAN GBP. So I'll go through the overview, use cases, details and caveats, configuration, best practices, and troubleshooting, and hand over to Corey for the demo and additional resources. Let's do an overview of VXLAN GBP or group base policy first. So this was added in 10.8, right? VXLAN GBP was added in 10.8. You can see here. In the VXLAN header, this group policy ID is now available for usage on these three platforms. This will enable role-based policies where, you're, where you can have policies that are no longer tied to IP addresses. When your device authenticates a different location or even different IP sub subnet, those role-based policies can take effect. Same thing, another review. Let's review the Micro segmentation and macro segmentation. So what is micro segmentation? Basically, when you have two devices on the same subnet, same VLAN, you can actually have a policy to permit or deny them based on roles. Right? Once the device authenticates, you want to allow or deny on the same subnet that can be done using micro segmentation. Macro segmentation refers to layer three segmentation, right? You can see here, different VLANs on different subnets. That's possible. So again, it's not dependent on IP or subnet. If this device authenticates on VLAN 200 and changes to VLAN 201, right, that, that role-based policy will still take effect. So what it is, a, it's a single EVPN VXLAN fabric. You can see here, this is a single fabric. That means it's fully meshed. All the VTAPs have fully meshed EVPN VXN tunnels between them. Okay, that's, that's what I mean by single fabric. Tunnels are fully meshed between the VTAPs. You can see resource support stub VTAP. Stub VTAP is used for overlay connectivity between static VXLAN, the gray tunnels, the AOS 10 gateway, and the orange tunnel, which are dynamic EVPN VXLAN tunnels. So you can co communicate between the wireless devices and the wired devices through the stub. So this is covered in 10.8. Please review those resources for those details. So now let's move on to multi-fabric. 10.11, we now add support for multi-fabric VXLAN GBP. So multi-fabric means, you can see here, fabric one on the left, fabric two on the right. The intra-fabric tunnels between all VTAPs within the fabric is still fully meshed. In the orange tunnel here. But now we, you can see there's a blue interfabric VXN tunnel between the fabrics. This will avoid fully meshed tunnels between excess VTAPs in different fabrics. So excess VTAP in fabric one and excess VTAP in fabric two, they do not have to build a tunnel, a direct tunnel. And the border VTAPs are used to create a tunnel between the fabrics. This will provide both layer two and layer three connectivity between VTAPs in different fabrics. This will basic the main purpose of multi-fabric extend is to provide increased VTAP scale. So you could have a number of VTAPs here and a number of VTAPs here to increase double the number of VTAPs across two fabrics. So multi-fabric EVPNV extend was also covered in 10.9 and 10.10. So please review those resources for details. We're just adding the GBP portion to multi-fabric in 10.11. And what's supported now is on the border, A360, on access, these are the three platforms because right, these are the three platforms that support GBP. On the border, only A360 is supported to relay GBP between the fabrics. So take note, even though I show a single icon as the border, we should be using, we should be deploying VSX logical VTAPs for high availability. The single is two physical switches, but one logical VTAP. Use cases. So in the campus, you could do this multiple fabrics with dedicated border VTAPs. So each fabric has its own dedicated border to communicate between them. This will support both layer two, same VLAN, cross fabrics, same VLAN, say 201 and 201 here, as well as different VLANs at layer three 
200 and 201. So it's typically used when your access and border VTAPs are not directly connected. So access to border might go through physically access at core to border, right? Multiple hops. So you can use this dedicated border VTAP. So you can do this one fabric per site. So this could be three sites or even one physical campus with three fabrics. Another use case would be a combined egg and border VTAP in the campus where you have your access and your egg directly connected and you use this egg switch as a border because they're directly connected. There's no uh, other device in, right in the middle. So you can also use this for both layer 2 and layer 3 connectivity across the fabrics. Same thing, you can also do one fabric per site. You can have three sites or even one site with two fabrics, like this example. Site 1 has two fabrics, and then you can use a border leader here. The third use case is shared border. But this shared border only supports layer 3 between the fabrics. And there's no L2, three fabrics supported. And this shared border is used when the VTEPs are also not directly connected. You can see access at might be a shared border here. Can be done. But L2 is not required between the fabrics in this campus. Only L3 is supported between these fabrics when you use a shared border. It's applicable to multiple fabrics per site. So details, what's supported between the fabrics? IPv4 and IPv6 unicast traffic in the overlay supported. Distributed layer 3 gateways, symmetric IRV is supported. What happens is the GBP ID is copied between the orange intra fabric and the blue inter fabric tunnels on the border VTAP. So it will relay, this border VTAP will relay that GBP ID between the fabrics. Just take note, policy enforcement is still done on the egress VTAP. So for example, from employee to guest device here, this access VTAP, this egress access VTAP will be the one enforcing the policy. Okay, It's not done on the transit border VTAP. So these border VTAP, they do not enforce policy, they just relay the GBP ID. And the good thing is there's no new CLI implemented or required. It didn't create a new CLI just to do this relay. Configuration-wise, just one line on global command. Okay. Please refer to 10.8, 10.9 for all these previous features. But on the for this 10.11 feature, all you need to do is enable GBP globally on the border to relay GBP ID between the intra-fabric and the inter-fabric tunnels. So you just need to configure that globally on the border. This is a sample of what it looks like previously on the access VTAP for IPv4, just for reference. So you here you do the GBP row to ID mappings. So employee is 100 GBP ID, for example. And you define your MAC and IP classes. Okay. Here to match whether you want to allow what kind of traffic, like TCP, from heart monitor to ultrasound. That's allowed, FTP is allowed. And the policy whether to drop or allow. Finally, the policy is associated to the user roles here. So that's IPv4. This is not specific to 1011. But if you want to do IPv6, this, here's another sample. What changes is here? This changes to IPv6 here, as well as these commands. Right? But the concept is the same for IPv6 and IPv4 on the XSV tab. If you want to do a combined V4 and V6 on the XSV tab, you see here this is GPV IP for V4 and IPv6 for V6. And this is the MAC. Best practices. So it's important that you review 10, 9, 10, 10 resources for EVPN, VXN, config and details. But for 10, 11, for this feature, you just need to make sure that on the border VTAP, GPP is enabled globally copy that GPP ID between the intrafabric and interfabric tunnels. Troubleshooting. 
So try to have your detailed diagram with all the ports and all the loopback addresses IPs. That's important to troubleshoot VXLAN. This is the recommended troubleshooting flow. So you need to make sure that if there are problems, make sure that multi-fabric EVP and VXLAN works even without GBP. Make sure that our connectivity works between the fabrics without GBP. Make sure your devices can communicate without GBP. This is to make sure it's not GBP related first. And you also want to check that single fabric VXN GBP works as expected before you even try, before you, so that you can isolate whether it's a multi-fabric or a single fabric problem. Finally, you want to check that the GBP tags are exchanged between the VTAPs. If the tags are not exchanged, then the policy will not work. So review this right? multi-fabric VXN EVPN without GBP using 10.9 and 10.10 resources. So you want to make sure that these devices can communicate using layer two and layer three without GBP first. And your clients, make sure they can authenticate and communicate without VXN GBP. So you might have this client limit set, but you forget about it, right? So only two clients can be allowed might be more, so you might want to increase that. You want to make sure the role names also match on clear pass and the switch. So when it authenticates, it can be matched correctly. So this LUR employee has to exist on clear pass. And of course, if GBP is disabled globally, you need to make sure that the GBP port access policy is not assigned to a role. If it's assigned like that and you disable GBP globally, Authentication will fail. Check single fabric because GBP works. So you want to have the roles assigned. Make sure it works within the fabric. This is nothing new to 1011, but you can check it using 10A resources. Make sure it works first. Finally, you want to check the tags I exchange between the VTAPs. So you might need to mirror multiple ports. Make sure the access is sending out. GPP ID, make sure the border is receiving and relaying to the other fabric. This is an example what to check for between the VTAPs. For that uh, device, make sure the correct GPP ID is seen for each role. So with that, I'll hand over to Corey for the demo. Okay, thanks, Daryl. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, just quick audio visual check can everybody yes. see? Okay, great. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do is, is show you how this works, this multi-fabric VXLAN GBP demo. Um, so as you can see here, we have, um, oh, let me get my laser pointer here. So we have uh, two 8360s acting as the border VTEPs and two 6300 acting as the uh, access VTEPs. Two fabrics, as you can see there, with a AS65001 and 65002. Um, we have two Ixia ports that are connected in each of these VLANs, sending traffic across the fabric, both switched and routed with V4 and V6. So what we're going to show you is kind of what that looks like, um, and also what it looks like on the wire, because we do have a Wireshark um, capturing station that we can take a look at the packets. OK, so let me go ahead and share the. Um, terminal sessions here. So the first thing that we want to basically show is, is GBP is enabled on these, these access VTEPs and also that the roles are identified. Um, the role IDs are specified there for 200 and 201. So that's actually what you're going to see on the wire. Uh, and that's true for both of the access VTEPs. And then for the, uh, the board of VTEPs, all you really have to do, as Daryl mentioned, is just have it enabled globally and that's been able globally on both of them. And then if we just kind of take a look at, you know, what's seen as far as uh, MAC addresses are concerned on the access VTEPs. We can see that port 1111 on both of these 6300s, uh, these are the EXIA um, uh, endpoints that are active in, in those uh, networks. And then if we look at the border or the border VTEPs as well, we can see that they're learned there on both the 243.11 access VTEP and the, the same thing on the other one. 
So 243.12 is learning both of those MAC addresses as well. Um, so let me just go ahead and show you what the Ixia setup looks like. Um, so you can see the source and destination endpoint pairs there. Uh, we're sending again, just, you know, switch traffic across VLAN 100 and 101, as well as routed traffic for both V4 and V6. Uh, we don't see any packet loss here. I mean, so everything is, is flowing as we'd expect it. So now we want to just go ahead and take a look at what this looks like from an access perspective. So here we can see where um, both of the ports are authenticated and they're assigned the local user role, employee role, and that actually maps to a, a GPP um, policy. And uh, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so in this policy, we can see um, for GBP that we've assigned the classes for each of these. And in both of these groups, we're either allowing, you know, uh, V4 and V6 traffic for both the, the groups for the employee and then the printer um, roles. And then if we go ahead and we actually just kind of disable, or actually before we do that, let's just take a, a look at one of the pack, packet captures. Okay, we'll just let that go for a second. And then we stop here and then we should be able to see inside, we can see the um, the group policy IDs that we had specified earlier in the configuration. So these are active and copied between the, uh, the board of ETAPs. And so traffic is slowing. And so what we're gonna do is just go back. And so again, without allowing traffic between these two groups, they wouldn't be allowed by default. So like rule number five and six, we've allowed uh, access to the employee group. Uh, for the printers. So if we go into this this and just kind of disable it. Okay, we'll see what happens here in terms of the traffic. We can see already that it's getting disrupted. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show as far as the GBP um, multi-fabric setup is concerned. So uh, let's go ahead and just go back to the slide deck. And then we just go over to resources. So these are just, you know, some references for the uh, overall release for VXLAN GPP on, you know, 10.8, 10.9, and 10.10. 10. Um, so we just ask that you, you know, go through those if there's kind of, uh, if you just want to learn more about the features and the history of, of how this evolved, um, you can have these for your reference. Um, and so with that, I think, uh, I think, I think Vince is up next as far as the roster is concerned. <laughs> 